Stay with me. Stay with me. So, what we want to do is examine our home life with our church life. And we want to do everything we can to make our home life match our church life. When your home life matches your church life, you're walking in power outside and in. Then anything that comes against you, because you got power in here, you got joy in here, you got strength in here, you leave here and you're ready to whoop the devil. Until you wake up on Monday morning, know you got to go to work and you got to work for the devil. Amen, Pastor. Watch this now. Because the reality is this. <coughs> you can't live in the Holy of Holies all the time. Y'all know what I'm talking about and say the Holy of Holies? That, that, that's the place where the high priest would go in. And matter of fact, he had, he had to make sure he did all this thing right. He had to have no sin on him. He had to do everything just right. And they even tied a rope around him because when he walked in the Holy of Holies, if he didn't do everything exactly right, God would, the holiness of God would kill him right there. And then they'd drag him out by that rope. And you know, they also used to hang bells on it. Because as long as they could hear the bells moving, they knew he was still alive. And it's a wonderful place to be in the Holy of Holies. It's an awesome thing to come to the house of God and be in the presence of God. It's an awesome thing to be able to worship God. It's an awesome thing to hear the Word of God. But honey, you can't live here 24 hours a day in the Holy of Holies. You got to take what you have powered here back there in your home life. And anything, any sin that gets in the way of that will negate any power that you want in your home. Because we perceive that there are some sin that's not as bad as others. Oh, here it comes. Well, at least I'm not raping children. Well, at least I'm not robbing banks. Well, at least I'm not a homosexual. But you are some of the other things. And those are the things that will rob you of your power at home. I can't tell you how many Christian men go on their computers and look at porn. Oh boy, that struck a nerve. And we wonder why things don't work for us. Can, can I, can I, I'm going to anyway. I've had people come to me and say, well, Pastor, I've been, I've been working this Christian thing now for years, and it just ain't working for me, and I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I don't understand why this don't work, and I'm doing everything I know to do. And the whole time, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, and the Holy Spirit one time told me, he says, because that guy's watching porn. I even had one time where the Holy Spirit told me something about a woman that was standing in front of me. And i tell you what, I just go through, because she's got lust for you, Pastor. You can't have those things on you and expect for the power of God. You got to get rid of those things. But what happens is, here it comes, our perception is that it's okay. Our, percep uh -oh. our perception of certain sins in our life, now here, here, here it comes, things will never change in your home life until you change. Now, you may say, well, I'm okay with, with things. They're, they're not perfect, but I can live with it. It's, it's better than what it used to be. It's still not God's best for you. God wants to empower you so that when these national disasters have hit, they don't discourage you. That when the government goes crazy, it doesn't scare you. That when the economy goes to naught, that you're okay. That when, it, it's an awesome thing for people of God that are walking this thing, that the health care crisis is going on. Because we've already got a health care plan. 
And I ain't got to worry about a bunch of lawyers ripping me off. Amen? So we've got these things in play. That's the awesomeness because you know what? We may be content with because we may be content where we are right now in life because it's still better than what it used to be, but none of it is God's best. God's best is for your home to be peaceful and loving and the power of God in there. And then you know what? People ought to be able to drive up to your home and feel the same thing in your driveway they feel when they pull into this driveway. When Cricket and I lived at Fawn Drive, which is the home of Tony and Cecilia right now, we used to have people pull up in our driveway, honk the horn, would come out, and they'd say, what I got to do to be saved? It happened often. That's the power of God. And if God's going to release that kind of power, don't you think He's going to release all the others? The prosperity, the healing, the deliverance, all of it is a package deal. And the only thing I'm saying to you is this is all available to you. But God said, if you want this, you got to take this. And if you take this, I'm going to give you what's in this. I'm going to close with this. <clears throat> you are looking at, at one time, one of the most violent individuals you would ever want to meet. Some of you have run into some people that knew me back then and you've heard of it. Some of you look at me and like say, well, there ain't no way that Pastor Ron, not sweet Pastor Ron. <laughs> you are looking at somebody with limited education. You're looking at somebody who was extremely violent. You're looking at somebody who used to put needles in his arm. You're looking at somebody that used to hurt people for a living. I would beat your brains out for 150 bucks. Whatever you, you just, all you had to do is tell me who and what and come up with some cash. And sometimes I'd make as much as five, six, seven hundred dollars off something like that. And if God can do for me, what can he do for you? And I was like you. I look back at it, and I, I, when I was in it, I looked at what God, was, what God had for me, and I just said, there ain't no way that that's for me. There ain't no way I'll ever walk in that lifestyle because I've done too much on this lifestyle. And I deserve everything I get. I'm talking about somebody that had all kinds of diseases that come along with uh, putting needles in your arm. I had them. Do I have them now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I'm here to tell you this. The reason why I'm bringing this up? Because to you, what I'm preaching about looks to be impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. But what it takes is a step on your part. It takes you stepping out. It's like the morning that I gave my life to God and I sold completely out. I didn't ask God to heal me. I didn't ask God to deliver, to deliver me. I didn't ask God to do anything. I didn't ask Him for a million dollars. I didn't ask Him for anything. Didn't ask Him for nothing. All I wanted Him to do was just forgive me. And when He forgave me, He also gave me healing and peace of mind and restored me almost instantly. So, it's all up to you. 
with all these disasters going on in our country, whether it's the government, whether it's the economy, whether, doesn't matter what it is, health care, and with all the natural disasters going on all over the world and in this country, how in the world can you turn this down? Once again, you know what it is? It's Noah and the ark all over again. God is saying to you, come inside this ark. I've been building this ark for you. And if you'll come in this ark, then I'm going to shut the door. And when the door is shut, the rain will start. Can you possibly imagine how Noah felt when the water started rising and all these people would come to the ark? Noah, let us in! Come on, Noah. We're sorry we made in fun of you. Pastor Ron, we're sorry that we made in front of your biker church. Will you let us in? It was out of Noah's hands. Because the door was shut. And so what I say to you today is don't be caught out there. Be caught in here. Inside the ark of Almighty God. Because what happens out there is rough. What happens out there is terrible, but it will not affect you. That's the whole purpose of our God, what he's done for our people. Stand up with me.